Welcome back to the channel. It's another beautiful day in London. So Monica and I are going to go right into the heart of London to a new coffee shop that we've never been to. And I was chatting to someone on Instagram who's a fellow biker and he was just asking me about my thoughts on the Triumph Street tri Triple and I think also the BMW R9 T. So I was just chatting about that and he kindly sent me over a free voucher to use and enjoy at his family coffee shop. I think it was originally from New York. Now they've got two sites in London and it's freshly ground and freshly roasted on site. Basically, they are massively into coffee. It looks like a really cool place. So I'll take you with me and I've got, let's see if I can do this okay. Here we go. I've got the Hepcom Becker panniers along with, because my knowledge of London is useless, along with the quad lock there with wireless charger. But these panniers here, brilliant, especially in London, because one of them I use to put the lock in and the other one I just chuck a few extra things in. And I've managed to, after the last time I used these panniers, I've actually got a couple of straps, so it's much easier. Take them off, strap over your shoulder. This is the other reason I love these Hepcom Becker Heritage panniers because they've got a tiny profile, so they don't add any extra width really to the bike. So filtering through traffic in a city, a dream with these things. I don't know if I've ever actually showed these in depth because these panniers are from a German company called Hepcom Becker and they are game-changing bit of kit for me. I've actually got two different panniers. One's a big black solid one that's more for touring and the others are these and they, they come with a lock. So you just slip them on, lock them on. They've got that. So these pull off in one second and then you just put the other size panniers on if you want them. So one second to take on, one second to take off. But just the quality. So this is, I think it shows up on the camera. This is green canvas with this brown leather strap, brass buckles and just heavy duty zips and the most beautiful quality panniers that I've ever seen. And I love the classic styling of them. It's, it's brilliant stuff from Hepco and Becker. I'll do the gear for the day at the beginning of the video this time. It's hot, proper summer now. So this DMD helmet is incredible for summer rides because it's got really thin padding and this vent here is so nice. And you can take this off and just wear goggles or something. But this helmet is one of the very best, if not the best helmet for summer rides. It's amazing. And in my eyes, look at that profile. It looks incredible. Monica's pinched this off me. This is actually one of my favorites as well, but she's kind of taken this. I'll just show you how this looks. This is a Spanish company called Garibaldi. And I wear this a lot, although I never have on YouTube yet. Really comfortable open face helmet. Cool retro styling, very, very, Nice helmet, it's only about 110 pounds that. And this, Brogamoto, Polish company. I wear this stuff a lot. It's incredibly good value. I think this is about 150 pounds, but for one, it's cool. Really nice and stylish. That's the back view. Very thin, so perfect for summer rides. Someone actually said to me, can you do a YouTube video on your best summer jackets and shirts? And I will do that very soon. But this is ridiculously thin. It's got all the padding you need, all the pockets, back, shoulder, elbow. I think it's Kevlar lined. This is the good thing. It's got a zip, heavy duty zip as normal. But when you do it up, these are just magnetic buttons that hold on into place. So you don't need to worry about any poppers. And the same there, just a magnetic button there, just folds down into place perfectly. And these, again, heavy duty zips. It's just a very easy jacket to live with. And if you can tell a bike has designed it, basically. It's really well designed. Jeans, rocker. I've completely forgotten, but I'll just write it in the description. Rocker, jeans very close to the ultimate. They're beautiful quality, single layer, so perfect in the summer. They're really nice and cool. TCX boots, I wear them a lot. Very close, these, to the best boots on the market in my eyes. They are superb. And throttle snake gloves I wear a lot. And Monica's got, <laughs> she does actually have some female riding gear. This is a pair of Racer, French company, Racer gloves. Really nice, I like those. And of course, Hepcom Becker panniers, quad lock, ready to go.
this is one of the most unique coffee shops I've ever been to. So I've had basically an overview, I think one of the filmed it, but this is what happened. The green beans there are the raw beans. They go up through the tube into that roasting thing there. They then spend seven minutes being roasted and then go back from there into these tubes with the brown beans and that's fully roasted brown beans. And then they go for those tubes at the end to be served. And the point is that usually coffee shops, the beans will be roasted off sites and then distributed around the country, for example. But here, every bean is roasted on site for all of them. All of their coffee shops. So they, I think they've got a few in the US and this is their second one in the UK and they opened 10 days before lockdown last year so this is the first time they've really been properly open for an extended period of time I think so it's amazing. I think I've got the we've both got South American single origin versions absolutely delicious food amazing now we'll come back 100% incredibly sweet and they've also given us a little bag of coffee freshly roasted coffee everything there is freshly roasted literally i think within about half an hour of you actually drinking the coffee it was roasted 20 minutes half an hour maybe even five minutes before it's literally roasted to order I just realised we're about five minutes from the Tate Modern and I haven't been in about 18, 20 years and Monica hasn't been in years so we're going to go pop in there, lock the bike up somewhere and it's about 26 degrees so having thin biking gear like this it's really the first day riding where you can make the most of this and it makes such a difference when you're riding long and you can actually feel the air coming through your jacket as opposed to a leather jacket or winter jacket that gets really hot so so glad I wore summer biking gear. So from my last video, living with the big Indian motorcycle vintage dark horse, and I said that parking in London was hard. This is pretty much what I'm talking about because the width of a standard bay that you can squeeze your bike into in London is so tight that a bike like a big cruiser makes it so hard. Like the motorcycle, the Indian motorcycle, it wouldn't fit in here, but the Bonneville, Perfect. Just getting some ideas. <laughs> Completely spur of the moment, but we've just ordered our tickets for there is the Tate Modern, you can just order it online for the day. So we had to wait, I think about an hour, so we're just chilling out back over there. But this is a great part of London. I mean, it's free to get in. You can give a donation of whatever you like. They suggest five pounds, give a donation, but it's great value really. And it's been so long since I've been here. I'll just pan around because some of the buildings around here are brilliant. And then a few, I think you can see it there, a few old warehouse type apartments there as well. It's a great part of London. And also if you ride into London, just a little fact for any bikers in London who aren't sure about parking, you can park in Westminster. You just type, go onto the Ringo app, type 6789, and then it's just a pound for all day parking in any parking bay in Westminster. So super easy. nice to be back it's been so long but completely honestly 80% of the artwork there I don't understand but it's cool to go back there 
about to head off in absolute heart of the rush hour traffic now but on a motorbike riding through London with rush hour traffic incredibly fun and satisfying because it's gridlocked with cars almost all day in London now but on a bike amazing oh and one other thing actually if you're on a bike you don't pay congestion charge you don't pay any kind of pollution charge but my parents drove through London by accident in their five-year-old BMW and it cost them 30 pounds in congestion charge for about 12 pounds 50 and about 15 pounds because they're driving in a diesel massive difference so biking in London the perfect transport and of course we get to park within a one minute walk of the Tate Modern, one pound a day, right in the heart of London, park all day. It's just so convenient. And when the weather's like this, it's a dream. The Google Maps says one hour, three minutes to get back, but with filtering in London, I hope we can get that down to maybe 40 minutes. Incidentally, on the way home, my neighbour just pulled up next to me. He was commuting back from London, so I was chatting to him. But we did it in about 40 minutes, which is, well, it says 20 minutes quicker than Google, but I know, I know that it should have <laughs> taken one and a half to two hours in a car because it was crazy. I think Monica managed to capture it so you can see what London traffic's like, but it's now got to a point in London where it's completely undrivable. London's so bad. But on a bike, it's still a dream. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. And maybe, I may try and do actually a riding shirt and summer riding jacket episode. So I'll see you then.